What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colos here, and you are now tuning in to a new video on my channel. But before we get all into the topic today, I want you to do the usual. Well, I guess subscribing to me isn't the usual, but subscribe to my channel if you have not. Hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the bell icon so that you get notifications for whenever I come out with new content on this channel. And then when you are finished, please feel free to leave me a comment at the end of this video. That way I can go back to it and then I can respond back to whatever it is that you had to say about the topic at hand. For today's topic, I want to talk about why black exploitation was the original form of pandering towards blacks. For those of you all who are not aware of what the black exploitation era was, that's when you see a lot of those movies, films, TV shows, that type of thing that have this exploited black or pro-black expression in their narratives. Like there were a lot of movies where you had you saw black people in fly clothes and you had this uh, kind of aesthetic like uh, the black people were real um, empowered and, you know, they hated white people and all this other stuff. So it kind of had that type of aesthetic to it. And, you know, you can see you saw it a lot during especially the 60s and the 70s. But the reason why I want to talk about it being the original form of pandering is very, very important. And I think that we need to kind of go back and have a sort of a history lesson here when we talk about this subject. So. Between the late 60s and the early to mid 70s was the time period in which the black exploitation era took place. And it really started with all of these different black riots that were going on nationwide. Because think about it, you had the, um, the Watts riot, which was in 1965. You had the Dayton race riots, which was in 1966. You had the Benton Harbor riots, which was in 1966. And then you also had uh, other movements as well, too, that were pro-black, like the Black Panther Party movement, which was also in 1966. Also, if you really look at the timeline of these events and compare them to when a lot of these black comic book characters started coming out. That was also in the late 60s, too, because you also had the Black Panther comic book series, which came out in, well, the Black Panther character, he came out in 1966. So these were all around the same time, and that really was not a coincidence. And then you also had these movies that had these kind of racial allegories that were kind of similar to all of the things that were going on around that time, like uh, Planet of the Apes. That really was a way for the white supremacists to try to make some type of allegory about black society one day waking up and revolting against white society and because of everything that white society has done to subjugate us. The reason why this is important is because I want you all to make the correlation as to why black exploitation was created and what was going on at the time when it was originally created. Now, a lot of people say that, you know, this is all that black people had. You know, we just we needed a way to be represented even during a time period where we had never really seen ourselves on screen and things like that. But I think it's much deeper than that. The idea of black exploitation was a form of pacification that was supposed to make black people calm down to a certain extent. And the reason why I say that is because at that time, all of these different riots, I know I named a handful of them and I also named the Black Panther Party because they were going on at that time. Whites knew at that time that black people were going to revolt more and more and more and more. And so they were afraid that it was going to get so bad that they were going to wipe them out. But the reality is, is that even those riots that were going on were reactionary because us as black people, we were on this revolutionary vibe and we were tired of being subjugated. So we were fighting back against the white supremacists and um, they saw that and they saw how powerful we were, despite the fact that we were fewer in number and our number had been mitigated because, again, white supremacy had a certain level of control and population tailoring that it actually, uh, uh, I guess, put onto black people. So the reason why I'm bringing all this up is to say that black exploitation was a way for us to be calmed down. So the reason why I say that is if you look at these narratives, like I said, they portrayed black people as being, you know, they had cool clothes. Like I said, um, they seem to be very stylish. They seem to, you know, be very empowered, very pro black very um, willing to beat down white people. And black people wanted to be able to see that representation. They wanted to be able to have a way to vent. They wanted an outlet. They wanted to be able to have 
uh, one, a, a way to basically get out all the frustrations that they've had from all this time that white people have been subjugating them. The second thing that they wanted to do was to know that there were some white people on their side that were trying to represent them properly. But black exploitation, unfortunately, was exactly as the name exclaims, which is that it's an exploitation of blackness itself. That's why it looks somewhat like a uh, black caricaturized or a pro-black caricaturized uh, depiction. And so that's why you would see all these images of black people saying stuff like, I'm going to get you, sucker. I'm going to get you, cracker. That's because that they were going for this uh, pro-black image that was exploited as something that was very violent and had somewhat of a almost like a funny, like loony type of theme to it, like a stylish, funny, um, loony theme to it. And because black people at that time were scraping the bottom of the barrel because they didn't really have representation like that, that was the thing that they wanted to go to. So the reason why I say it's pacification is because it was a way for, you know, uh, the white supremacists to do what they do today in a different way, which is to put things out there that look like they're either empowering or they show the idea that things are changing because they recognize us when in reality what they're actually doing is pacifying you so that you don't make your own thing, so that you don't revolt like they were back then and so that you won't do things to show how pissed off you are at the fact that you've been subjugated, mistreated, disrespected and all this other stuff just because you're black. And then they also kind of took it a little bit further because, again, they did go into the comic books and they started making black comic book characters like Black Panther. But you also can look at characters like Black Lightning and you can look at characters like Luke Cage or Power Man at that time. They changed his name, but it's a story for another time. You can look at even Black Man and you can look at Bronze Tiger and they had somewhat of this black exploitation type of uh, gimmick as well, too. And some of these releases, especially like uh, Luke Cage and Bronze Tiger, those characters were coming out in like 1972 and in 1975. So again, that was in that time range of from the early 60s or mid, I'm sorry, late 60s to uh, the early to mid like 70s where this was all going on. And so you saw them, even if you look at the old school comics, look at like the, the outfits of the characters like Bronze Tiger and the characters like Luke Cage. They look like black exploitation type of characters, kind of similar to the ones that you would see in films that had nothing to do with comics itself. So what they were trying to do was they were trying to create that same representation, even in comic books as well, for the people who were comic book fans. So that if there were black nerds out there, which we've always been out there, like I said before. Um, that there would be a space for them to see themselves and in, in, in the content that they enjoy. So I'm saying all this to say to you that even back in the 60s and 70s, the white supremacist was making an effort to try to pander to us because they were afraid of the way that we would rise up and either do our own thing or we would wipe them out. And their way of doing it back then was black exploitation, whereas their way of trying to do it right now would be controlled opposition or creating race swaps like the first black fill in the blank and that type of thing or having like more black faces in high places. So they try to do those types of things to pacify um, our people. And that's why you see a lot of images of black people in media. It's not because they actually care to show diversity, as they always say. It's because they really want to make it seem like they are on the side of black people and that they want to help the healthily. Uh, that's not even a word, but um, they want to, in a healthy way, represent black people so that they feel basically inclined to want to continue to support the product that they're putting out there. But even if you look very closely, just like black exploitation, they make sure to put all these little disrespectful narratives behind the main image that they're trying to push out there to the forefront. You know, with black exploitation, again, the big thing was creating this idea of black hatred and this idea of the angry Negroes and this idea of an exploited version of pro-blackness, which pro-blackness shouldn't be exploited. It should be understood and it should be celebrated. Whereas when they do controlled opposition, they'll always put a black woman at the forefront. They always make it seem like the black man is not worthy of being led or they make the black man a villain. And then oftentimes too, they'll make the black woman who is pro-black into somebody who is white or they'll make them LGBT so that they are not represented with being with a black man. So they do the same thing today in 2024 that they did in 1960 or 1965, 1966, and the same thing they did in 1970 when it was kind of going towards the end of that whole black exploitation era. 
Anyway, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to share that with you all really quickly. If there is anything else that um, you would like to hear from me on this topic, feel free to either shoot me a message or leave me a comment because I would love to talk about this subject even more. But other than that, I hope y'all enjoyed it. I will talk to y'all later and I have, will have more content to come soon. Peace.